The next type of a sensor we're going to discuss is range finder. We're going to discuss two types of uh, sensors in this section. One is ultrasonic sensor, the other one is laser sensor. So the range finder, the idea of range finder is simple. I send out a signal, it can be ultrasonic, it can be light or laser. So it will travel through certain amount of distance, then it will bounce back. By counting the time between I send out a signal and the time I receive a signal, divided that by two, that is going to be how far this uh, the, the signal has traveled. So if we know the time, we know the speed of the uh, signal we're sending out, we should be able to find out the uh, distance between my position and the targeted uh, object. So it's pretty straightforward. In other words, the distance is simply velocity multiplied by travel duration. So if you are using ultrasonic, then the sound speed is going to be 340 meter per second. If you are detecting light, then it probably uh, 0.3 meter per nanosecond. So when we are using those two different kinds of things, you're going to find out it's difficult for us to use light sensor, uh, laser to detect something within maybe 1 or 100 meters because you pro we probably cannot de detect the time difference since it's too fast. So if we are trying to do something like um, 2 kilometer, 3 kilometer, then laser might be better because the energy is concentrated and it's fast enough. Uh, it's long enough for us to detect the, the, the difference. But if you are talking about maybe uh, like 70 centimeter, 20 centimeter, or few meters away, then it would be a better idea. We use so ultrasonic sensor. So again, the ultrasonic uh, distance detector, the idea is pretty straightforward. We got one speaker or a meter on one side, the other one is receiver. So the signal sending out from the transmitter or the speaker and once it hit the object over here, it's going to bounce back to uh, the sensor module and the receiver is going to uh, receive a signal so if we know the distance uh, if we know the time divided by 2 multiplied by the speed of sound then we should be able to find out what is the distance the for this kind of a sensor is not so expensive you probably spend seven dollars to twelve dollars on eBay or uh, other Amazon or other uh, robot shop, you should be able to get those kind of uh, sensors uh, from those vendors. The best distance for this kind of sensor is between 2 cm to about 4 meters or 1 feet to 13 feet. So keep in mind when we are using those kind of things, is more like a module, uh, modulated signal. So it's going to send out like a sequence. And they have their own protocol, sending out a signal and receive a signal. That reason we're doing something like this is because we need to identify this is really the signal we're sending out. And we are receiving the signal sent out from my sensor. So this kind of things can be useful to detect the distance between my per current position to the objects. However, there is one other, there is one drawback of using this kind of uh, sensor. That is, this kind of sensor can only be used in the environment that has air. For instance, if you try to design a robot on Mars or on the moon, ultrasonic sensor is not applicable because there is no air on the moon and the density of air is pretty thin on Mars. 
So ultrasonic sensor is not applicable for the environment like this. If you try to use this kind of things underwater, it is not a good idea either because water probably going to attenuate the, the, the energy of the signal you're sending out. And therefore, it might be a little bit difficult to receive to receive the signal when it bounces back. The other thing is the transmitting speed underwater is going to be different from the uh, sound speed in the air. So when you are using this kind of sensor in different environment, you need to be careful in adopting the correct uh, sound speed in different environment. That then you can make uh, 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 your measurement accurately. The other thing for the limitation of ultrasonic sensor is that the angle is also limited, which can be a good thing because we are not trying to send out a signal that is detecting everywhere surrounding the, 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 the robot. We would like to know what's going on uh, right in front where the sensor is facing to. So when we have this kind of things, we need to know what is the uh, range of angles that we're trying to detect. In this case, the ultrasonic sensor has a range which is about 30 degree. So it means that it's going to be plus minus 15 degree on each side. And typical range, depending on what kind of uh, uh, sensor you're, you're, you're dealing with, if you are using the sensor we talked about in the previous page, then it probably only like four, four meters, plus minus few centimeters. But if you uh, buy some, something more powerful, then the distance can be extended to about 30 meters. So depending on what kind of um, uh, sensor you're adopting in your application, the range can be a little bit different. So this one can be used to map the surrounding environment. Since we say that the, 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 the range is going to be about 15 degrees, so if we can equip 360 degree divided by 30 degree, which is 12 sensors in a robot, then we should be able to map it. We should be able to map the surrounding environment around the robot. And we should be able to detect the, uh, the object, the distance of the individual objects around the robot according to uh, the, the, the orientation of the sensor. Or you can just use a single sensor and have it to be uh, circulating for 12 times. So we should be able to generate a map what objects has been surrounding the, the robot device. Let's talk about how we're going to deal with that. Okay, so let's say there is an object is 10 centimeters away from the sensor. And we also know that the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. So we want to know the sound, uh, how long the receiver is going to receive the bounce back signal after the, 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 the ultrasonic sound wave has been sent from the emitter. So this one is pretty straightforward because we know the speed is 340 meter per second. It means that the V is going to be 3 0.4 multiplied by negative power of negative 4 meter per microsecond. Because we're talking about the distance is only 10 centimeters away. So the time you receive the signal, uh, the bounce back ultrasonic signal is going to be uh, short. So we're going to use this kind of a the configuration to um, calculate the, 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 the duration. So in this case, the distance is going to be 3.4 
multiply by this one this is going to be the speed so we need to know the time then we multiply by delta t the time you send in between you sending out the signal and the time you receive the bounce back signal but keep in mind the it has been traveled twice longer than we expect so we need to divide this one by two that is going to be distance we're going to uh, have so since we know the distance is 10 centimeter away we know it's going to be 0.1 meter that is going to be 3.4 Delta T. Okay, so based on the problem statement over here, we know 10 centimeters require 294 microseconds to reach the distance. So in this case, since it's not traveling only for 10 centimeter, it actually travel for 20 centimeter. So the delta T in this case is going to be uh, 0.1 multiplied by 2 divided by 3.4 multiplied by this one so it's going to be uh, 2 divided by 4 is about 588 milliseconds or microseconds okay so this is how we do the calculation so next time if you know uh, the time duration for instance if you know it's going to be uh, let's say is uh, 147 microsecond then the distance delta D is going to be 3.4 multiplied by negative power of uh, 4 multiplied by uh, 147 divided by 2 multiplied by then we should be able to find out what the distance is going to uh, is going to be so this is how we uh, calculate the distance between the object and my current position so this kind of the uh, sensor has been adopted widely in mobile robots because for mobile robots we need to detect what's going on in the surrounding environment all the time so we would need to use this kind of things to detect what is in the arena and use this one to intercommunicate with the robot in the same area so if you are de designing mobile robots ultrasonic sensor can be a very convenient tool that we can use to detect the surround, surrounding environment. The other thing we're going to talk about is laser rangefinder. Laser rangefinder can be much better device to detect something which is long distance. Keep in mind, uh, the signal of laser is much faster than ultrasonic. So instead of a uh, waiting for few hundred microseconds we are looking for nanoseconds and the, uh, since the, 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 the energy is much more concentrated so the angle is going to be way smaller which means the resolution can be much better than ultrasonic sensor we no longer restrict it to um, uh, 15 degree uh, plus minus 15 degree range of the sensor now we're talking about maybe the resolution can be a 10 millimeter or something like that and the angular resolution can be as good as 0.25 degrees for this kind of device normally we are not looking for a single position instead we are trying to do this is a sensor and we might have a tree we might have a rock we might have people over here so this one is not going to 
uh, detect a single point in front of it. Instead, it was shooting out the laser. Do the swiping, sweeping from one side to the other side. And it's going to generate a profile of the distance in front of it. Okay, so keep in mind, if it's more than the range we space by, let's say 200 meters, then if nothing within 200 meters, then it becomes an open area. But if there is a tree or a rock in front of it, you cannot see the whole thing. You can only see the side that face to the, to the laser. Things on the other side can no longer be, can, can never be plot, plotted because it's not uh, possible for the uh, range finder to detect the object behind the, 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 the surface it can see. So when you use laser range finder, this can be something you need to be careful.